Hello friends, welcome to Friday Night Family Worship. So glad to have you join us. Good to have you here with me too, hon. I am happy to be here. Happy Sabbath, happy blessed Sabbath to you. And what are we talking about? Blessings. Okay, <laughs> get your Bibles because we're gonna be talking about blessings all over, all different types of blessings because people want to be blessed. Mm -hmm. People want to bless others. Yes. God wants to bless us and we want to bless the Lord. And so thank you for taking the time to join us to um, bring in the Sabbath together. If the Sabbath has already started where you are, happy Sabbath to you. We have family with us, honey. Why don't you introduce who's with us this evening? All right. We have Dee Hildebrand. Hi. Welcome, Dee. I am so happy to be here. It's yeah. been a while since we've been together doing family worship and it's great to be here. Right. And Eric Durant. Good Eric to have from you here, Eric. Eric from Engineering. Very happy to be here. <laughs> That's right. Always blessed. Every time you're around, I feel so secure. <laughs> <laughs> Eric is also part of our security team. He's a wonderful and a man. Wonderful man. Dog. He and his wife Marilyn, who runs yep. the um, call center. Mm -hmm. Good to have you here. It's always yes. an amazing blessing. Uh, we always enjoy doing family worship, and uh, we really look forward to the lessons that we learn when we're here. Mm -hmm. Well. You know, on that note, why don't you Sherry. begin with prayer for us? Yes. Okay. So we can make sure that our topic about blessings is blessed. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together when we can come together as a family, both our family behind the camera and our family in front of the camera, mm -hmm. where we get to share your word and learn from you. We ask, Father, that you bless each and every one of us, that your your truth and your gospel resonates through all of our hearts. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, we're talking about, as I said, yeah. God's blessings or blessings in general. And um, I want to begin. You talked about a definition you had and you yeah. found, you know, so many people have different definitions about blessings, but share with us what you, what you found. I looked up the word blessings. What does it mean? And it says here, God's favor and protection. You know, some people say their blessings before the meal, ask the Lord to bless their meal. When you travel, we ask the Lord to bless us as we travel, to protect us, His blessings be upon us. And there's also, it says here also, it says pronounced words in a religious rite to confer or invoke divine favor upon or ask God to look favorably, favorably upon us. So. Those are the meanings of blessings with God. And we also have a friend named Blessings, don't we? <laughs> exactly. That's right. Yeah. It's and a so. beautiful th name to have. Mm -hmm. God's favor. Ask God to bless us. Go ahead. And it's also good to experience God's blessings. So before we dive into our outline, you know, we like to have an outline that we follow along uh, each week with. And uh, if you have your Bible, as I mentioned to you, don't, it's not imperative, but if you have it, you could mm -hmm. follow along some of the scriptures mm -hmm. that we bring up. But Dee, let's talk about blessings. What do you think when you th hear the word blessing? You know, it's such a broad topic and it covers so many different things in so many different areas. Yeah. I feel like God has blessed me with life. Yes. That's right. And so there's a there's spiritual blessings, mm -hmm. there's physical blessings, mm -hmm. there's mental, emotional. Blessings is kind of like love. It covers mm -hmm. everything in our lives and it depends on how we approach it and how we think about it. It's not just um, please God give me. Those are not just the blessings no. we have. That's right. um, I, I, to me, the joy that God fills my heart with is a blessing. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what He brings into my life, um, the blessing, it's just so broad. It and it, 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 like everything else, God's promises and His blessings are dependent upon our relationship with Him. That's right. That's true. Um, very, very good. And even though God has, God loved me before I loved Him, yes. He blessed me before I loved Him too. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Wow. And we need to acknowledge that and realize what He does for us. That's right. Eric, when you hear the word blessing or blessings, what, what comes to your mind? I think that God blesses us so that we can bless each other. Mm -hmm. um, I also know that blessings can sometimes be trials. Mm -hmm. um, not mm. all the blessings are not all the blessings feel good. Right. Okay. That's yeah. no, very good. I look. I look in the Bible at the different people. Uh, Joseph. Did you know that he was blessed when he was thrown in the pit mm -hmm. and when he went to prison? Mm -hmm. He was because he ended up saving Israel. That's right. You know, I look at Moses when he was cast out of Egypt. Mm 
and he went into the desert. Did he know that he was blessed at the time? He was, because if that didn't happen, he'd be a he'd be a mummy right now in in some exhibit in some museum. Instead, he's in heaven. That's right. With with God. So sometimes our blessings are thorns in the flesh. Mm. God puts them there, and we don't look at it as a blessing at the time, but it is, and uh, it keeps us in many ways. It keeps us humble. Yeah, the humility that comes with blessings. That's a very good approach because a lot of times we think of blessings as something positive. Well, but, blessing, um, blessings but it comes. are positive if they're to grow. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is our trials and things are blessings because they help us grow spiritually and make sure that we're in heaven. They can be, yes. But they yes. can be. Mm -hmm. But the Lord knows how, for example, uh, when you cut a piece of wood and it ends up becoming a very expensive sculpted piece, mm -hmm. somebody says, wow, I never thought that that block of wood would end up becoming an, a, a piece that's now being auctioned for multiple thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. But it's the touch of the master's hand that really makes the difference mm -hmm. between our beginning and the end result of our blessings. And in the very same way, we get filed down on the process. I can share a very painful blessing that I had. Oh, mm. yes. Who would have thought that the losing of a parent would have drawn me into the ministry? Mm. Okay. You know, before I was secular, before I enjoyed the world and in, in, in my career, and the loss, though painful, in a sense, it's a blessing. My mother would have been proud mm. to have to have passed away, and if she knew that it led me closer to the Lord, mm -hmm. which is what it did. So sometimes the painfulest lessons mm -hmm. and the painfulest things are actually blessings, even though we don't see it at the time. Yes. Wow, that's yeah. so true. You're an only child. I'm one of three. Oh, you're one of one three. Of three. One I of thought three. you were an only child, but yeah. you're not, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I know you were raised in Brooklyn like us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, a New Yorker. Yeah. Hey, what happened? You should raised <laughs> I'm in New the York. West Coast girl, sorry. Tied the east, as far as the east is from the west. But Eric said something about blessings earlier, mm -hmm. and I connected it, connected with that. We always pray, Lord, help me to receive a blessing as well as be a blessing to someone. Right. We always pray that, especially on Sabbath morning. That's right. We want to be a blessing. Right. You know, you always want to receive one, but there's many times you could be a blessing to someone, an encouraging word to them or whatever the Lord impresses on your heart. And, and we've had people that have called us and said, you know, we want to give you something. We said, no, no, no. They said, Oh, yeah. Don't rob us of our blessing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And so you might be one of those individuals that may be in any one of the camps we just talked about. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do is we're going to start and see how God really, when, uh, uh, when, we, when he looked at the world and saw it in its potential, mm -hmm. there are things he established from the very beginning that are perpetual blessings mm -hmm. that some people have missed. Uh, but, but let's talk about that. Let's go to Genesis mm -hmm. chapter 2, verse 3 first. Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, some of the things that God blessed from the very beginning. And, um, from creation. Yeah, from, from creation. From, from creation, oh, yeah. exactly. Genesis 2, verse 3. Okay, honey, why don't you start with that one? All right. Then God. Matter of fact, yes. read verses 1 to 3. I think the full picture is necessary. <laughs> okay, here we go. Genesis 2, 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Verse 3, then God did what? Blessed, Blessed the what day? Seventh, seventh day. day. And sanctified, sanctified it. Because in it, he rested from all, all his, his work. work, which God had created and made. Wow, and um, a lot of people don't know, but you can't find in uh, astronomy, you can't find it in the stars, you can't find it in time cycles like 24 hours or 365 days a year or 30 days a month. You can't find in any of those cycles anything about a week. Mm. There's no seven day physical evidence of a seven day. The only place you can trace seven days is in the Bible. That's yes. right. It's amazing. The only place that the Bible, the only place that the seven day cycle is mentioned is in scripture. Yes. I think if we think about why God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, 
he had just finished creation. Well, what was his purpose for creation? He wanted a relationship with man. Yeah. We were created to have relationships with him, yes. to for him to love and for us to love him. Yes. That's what God is all about, is love and relationship. Mm -hmm. So the first thing he did after all his creation was set aside a time mm -hmm. to share with us. Ah. He wants to spend time with yes. His creation. That's right. And that's why it's such a blessing that we can all come together on one specific day for all of us yes. to be, God inhabits the Sabbath somehow. Right. I don't even know how to explain that, <laughs> but He inhabits it and it's a time we can all share together, all His children and Him to build relationship. I like that. And it's blessed forever and ever and ever. Matter of fact, Genesis 5 verse 2, let's look at that one also because there's another blessing that uh, came after the blessing, actually before the Sabbath, mm -hmm. because when the Sabbath came, God pronounced everything was very, very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look at Genesis chapter 5 verse 2. What else did He do? D? He created them male and female and blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. Okay. He so, put together, yeah. he, he created marriage, a couple, a family, he, wow. he, yeah. which is again relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because he wanted us to have relationship on this earth. So it's a blessing that is forever and ever. It, it is. And, and so Eric, I'm going to throw this yeah. question out at you. What has happened to the two greatest oh, blessings yeah. God bestowed upon humanity? What's happening to that? The Sabbath. I think the Satan, he likes to counterfeit everything. He likes to create an opposite, a false, a fake. And when you look at society today, Satan's targeted everything that God's blessed, everything that God's made holy, such as marriage, such as what we just read, male and female, and he's created confusion. Hmm. So the devil, I like to say, the devil likes to flip everything God's made 180 degrees mm -hmm. on its back. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what he's a master of. He's, he's, he's a liar. From the, from the first. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of people fail to realize, now let's just look at that again because a lot of times people might say, well, okay, well, that was so long ago, it's not relevant today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But it is relevant today because people are still getting married. Correct. Right. But let's go to the next level. So, can you find a blessing outside of the way that God established marriage to be? I don't think so. You can't. I don't think so. Man and woman together is what God established as the perpetual blessing for the human race, call the, man, call the mankind. And then later on he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Yeah. And that institution has been, been uh, attacked. Under attack, yeah. It's under attack. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you have the Sabbath. Can you find a blessing on any other day? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, did God bless any other day? You did can't. God sanctify any other day? Exactly. No, right, he didn't bless, he didn't right. sanctify, he didn't make any other day holy, Ooh. he didn't rest on any other day. Mm -hmm. right. So uh, you can't find anything else in scripture that talks about the blessing of another day. True. It's impossible. We wow. can't bless and we can't make holy. No. Only God can do that. Only That's God, right. exactly. And, and I think a lot of people, we've taken on the stance that, mm -hmm. sure, just because it's a day, I can make that day holy too. Mm. You can't because you're not God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God has to be the center of both of these. God has to be the center of the Sabbath and God has to be the center of a marriage mm -hmm. to for it to be what He created it, intended it to be. That's right. Exactly. Um, you can have a marriage that is not blessed if God is not at the mm. center of That's it. That's right. Amen. Um, and you can worship, um, but it's not blessed and sanctified like the seven day Sabbath mm -hmm. because God is at the center of that. That's right. It's different. And what's wonderful about blessings is that no matter what the blessing is, whether it's a painful blessing or a happy blessing or a joyous blessing, if you keep God at the center, mm -hmm. if you keep your eyes on Jesus, He's going to help you to bear the fruit to make that positive. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I truly believe in the end, all blessings end up joyful. But sometimes they start off a little bit wrong. <laughs> very, very true. You know, I, I really believe that God blessed, I know that He blessed me before I loved Him and before I was a Christian, but it wasn't the full blessing He wanted right, to give me. not the full. So I think that there are people out there who have a relationship mm -hmm. with God mm -hmm. and He loves them and they love Him, but they are cheating themselves out of a full blessing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to explain it any more than that, but it's, yeah. it's not the full blessing that He wanted to give us. I think I cheat myself out of complete blessing sometimes because I'm not 
going about it quite quite the way I should or or yeah. Well, let me have you turn to this text, uh, uh, Eric, <laughs> Hebrews 12:11, because she talked about blessing. Sometimes it doesn't always appear to be a blessing, but it ends up being a blessing. <laughs> How God works and God works as a, we've, we often say God works in mysterious, mysterious ways. ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts, our ways are not his ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are his ways above our ways and his thoughts above our thoughts. But look yes. at this one. I think this is probably what you're talking about in the sense of the, oh, the blessing that I eventually see. shows up. That's yeah. right. Look at this one, Which Hebrews 12 and verse 11, if you have your Bible. Eric? Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, <laughs> but painful. Nevertheless, afterwards, that's perfect. Afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of the righteous to those who have been trained by it. Okay. Ah, that's perfect. perfect. Isn't that perfect? Yeah. So you think, oh man, why am I going through this? What? This is terrible. The Lord says, hang in there. Mm -hmm. Like he, like, like the gardener trains the limb on the tree, like the vine dresser trains the vine, like the, uh, the horse trainer trains the, 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 what do they call the little horse? What do they call them anyway? <laughs> Whatever you get trained, horse, yeah. all like the dog that just got trained because the owner says, "Man, this dog is out of, is, you know, all over the place." Oh, okay. <laughs> then later on, he says, "Now mm -hmm. that dog is a blessing." He sits there, he's quiet, he's not ripping up the couch furniture anymore, and it happens by training. So sometimes trials train us That's right. to see God's blessing eventually. Wasn't it Jacob? He struggled all night. All night. Yes. All night. I, I still can't imagine that. He struggled oh. all night and he said, I will not let you go until, until you bless me. me. Great. So Wonderful. had he given up halfway through yeah. that struggle, God mm. wouldn't have been able to bless yeah. him in the end, which is what happened. Okay. So, so, so what you're saying then is some people let go. Yes. yes. Too quickly. Yes. Way too quickly. Oh. Because it, hurts too much in the beginning sometimes. Yeah. So in other words, if you endure the test, the blessing yeah. comes. Yes. Okay. And sometimes God allows tests to come to us. He needs to expose. We think, how many people do you know that was this wonderful Christian and then something happened, something painful mm -hmm. happened mm -hmm. and they totally walked away from God mm -hmm. because he needed to let them know where their relationship really was, where it really stood. And yet other people go through pain yes. and they draw close to the Lord. That's right. So it's our choice. Do you love the Lord or do you just um, have a relationship for his blessings? Hmm. And then if the blessings aren't there, you don't want anything well, to do Well, you've experienced that losing your husband. It was very painful from speaking to you, well, but there was a blessing looks, in it too. And where did, you, where did the loss of your husband lead you to? Yeah. To 3ABN. Oh. Well, okay. And I was not that strong of a Christian. I, I really, yes. I, I don't know God's purposes. I don't know, Dave and I had plans for oh. our future Christian life. Right. But God can see the future. Yeah. I, I don't know why David had to leave so soon, but I trust in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And Absolutely. his blessings, uh, his control of my life because I gave him control of my life. I chose to have him take control of my life because I wasn't doing that good of a job. <laughs> so his blessings can be um, amazing even when we don't understand them. We have, that's part of trusting. And as he blesses you and you see how he leads and you look back, yes. then yes. it's like, what a blessing. <laughs> and the thing is, the real blessing is, I really feel, can, feel, assured mm -hmm. that G Dave and I will be reunited. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. So that is exactly. that blessed hope. He okay, died like in the that. Lord. That's my blessed like hope because I know blessed. David went to sleep in Jesus. That's yes. right. One of the things I, I, I love studying the Bible because reading about heaven oh. is, I never, it never gets old. That's right. And one of the things I'm looking forward to is reviewing the records and seeing how God mm -hmm. did things to guide me and even though some of them were rough and some of them were great and some of them felt good and some of them felt bad, I'll get to review the records and say, Lord, exactly what you did exactly. was perfect. Mm. What and I he needed. did what he had to do mm -hmm. to lead me where I needed to go and in my heart where I wanted to go. And we often get a chance to look in the rear view mirror and say, man, I just, that was just like a, 
You look back on that like we think <laughs> when we first decided to come and get into ministry in 1987, mm -hmm. we think either we were crazy <laughs> or we were just <sighs> filled with faith and we knew that God had a blessing waiting for us because yeah. we were really... When we, we were, left Florida, we had nothing. We were just threw caution into the wind. We yeah. had less than... We wouldn't do that had today, like 700 we? bucks with us. Can yeah. you imagine moving from Florida to California with $700? When, when you're young, right. you do things like that exactly. because you just feel like you can conquer the world yeah. with God. Yeah. You, you know, we're just like, okay, go. <laughs> we were 27 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at that time. And so we look back on that now and we says, either we were crazy <laughs> or we so trusted God in you every so aspect. You so trust. You know, we, remember we are God's That's children. Right. Right. And if you truly, those of us who, I haven't actually raised children, but when you love children, yes. when you love your child, yes. what does it say? You chasten your child. Yes. When you truly love someone, mm -hmm. you want to raise them up to be, um, healthy and whole and, and a, a, a human being that has a good life. And so you do that by chastening them and guiding them and, and directing them. So God <laughs> loves us enough. God loves us so much. He will do whatever has to be done whatever to have takes. us with him for eternity. Do Just like we do anything we can to have our, to raise our children. You know, properly. John, when you said that, you reminded me of Abraham. Okay. When God said, pack your bags mm -hmm. and head out, mm -hmm. and where am I going? Don't know. Don't know. My wife just whispered I whispered it. I said, Abraham and Sarah, that was us. That's right, we did. We <laughs> went out not knowing where we were Abraham going. Abraham and Sarah. And we look back on now, and, and it's kind of in, the, in, the, in a similar way, in a, hum, in a humble way. Um, he says, through you, the nations of the earth will be blessed. Amen. And we look at our lives today, and I say this with, with all humility, oh, yeah. as we travel around the world and people say, you know, I enjoy that sermon. I, you know, that song my touched me. My life was changed. That, my life was changed because, was because of that message that I came back. And I'm thinking, praise wow, praise, praise God. God. And he saw that way back then. And, and as a great loving father, he, he probably said, uh, I'm not going to show you what I'm going to do. 15 years from now, because you can't handle it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take you through some serious molding. You're going to go through some fires. You're going to go through some <laughs> sandpaper, spiritual sandpaper. I'm going to bring some tough people in your life to, to iron you, to sharpen you. You're not going to like it, but when you look back, you're going to say, man, yeah. God, you're amazing. Matter of fact, I want to go to the Proverbs 10, verse 6. I want you to read that one for us, honey, because this is what God does. He does it in, in ways that, mm -hmm. and as you're listening, the Lord is not going to inform you before he turned your life inside out <laughs> because you wouldn't be able to handle it. A lot of times people say, what's going to happen next year? Don't ask that question. You don't want to know. Right. Okay, Proverbs 10, verse 6, honey. Blessings are on the head of the righteous, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. Notice the contrast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so who gets the benefit of the blessing? The righteous. The righteous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When we step out in faith, when you stepped out like you did, and when I came here to 3ABN, there's a, God gives you a conviction. Um, yes. When I came to 3ABN, like nine months after David passed away, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to make, I left my job, I wow. left my home, I left my family, I left the mm -hmm. dog. Oh. <laughs> I made, and I came to somewhere that I didn't know anybody. I didn't know how, I didn't have a home when I came here. I did have a job, but my <clears throat> income was going to be less than what I can add pretty well. <laughs> I knew that my income was going to be less than what my outgo looked like yeah. it was going to be. It didn't make any sense, oh. but I, I was so convicted that this is what God wanted me to do. I just let, and I wasn't no 27 years old either, <laughs> <laughs> but you had a strong conviction Absolutely. Of what God wanted you to do. So when God gives you a conviction like that, that strong, you need to follow it as long as you realize that it is biblical and it's That's right. you're really following him. If I knew what laid ahead of me of three, at 3ABN, this hasn't been um, a bed of roses. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have come. Um, and I certainly didn't plan on being here this long. But God, I trusted in God's plans. Amen. That's right. And I allowed my life to be put into his hands because he has the perfect plan. Jesus wanted to bless the apostles, mm -hmm. but he told them, I have many things to tell you, 
but I'm not going to tell you yet because you're not ready for not it. Not ready. And I always imagine that had he told them what he told them at the end of John, which is you're all going to die except for John. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> had he told them that in the beginning, they'd have said, I'm out of here. Right. So uh, he held off on telling them these things so that he could bless them in the long run. <laughs> and their deaths, their martyrdom, has blessed how many people? Oh, oh. still. Yeah. Still through the third days, day. become the catalyst. But the blessings grow you spiritually to make you yes. strong enough. That's right. When you're re as you as God blesses you and you grow, you become strong enough in that relationship and that faith that you can handle it. When He says, "Well, by the way, you're going to die." That's right. Ah. Well, let me show you something. I want you, oh, this is not a plan I had, but let's go to Psalm 73, because sometimes we don't see God's plan, and 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 some of you watching the program or listening can get very, very, very frustrated because you just don't think it's fair. Yeah. Some people, some people that are Christians say, God, it's just not fair. Look at these wicked people, how they seem to be prospering. So what we're going to do here, and um, it is 28 verses, 7 4 is a 28. Okay, we're going to go through seven verses each. Now, right. what is this? It's Psalm, Psalm 73. 73. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're going to do this in a cadence. Okay. So I'm going to have to start with Angie, then I'm going to do it, and then Eric, and then D. Okay? okay, 7 4 is a 28. Matter of fact, I want to end. All right. Okay, okay so okay. let's start with Angie, then okay. go around. Okay, sure. Okay. Now, this is, by the way, a, okay. a young man by the name of Asa. Asa. Yeah. And he is just not having it. Mm. I mean, he's, I'm going to just contemporize it. <laughs> he's living in Beverly Hills. He's living in a high rise. He's living in, in the uh, a, a broken down house in New York. He's living in Miami in the Boreal part across the tracks. Mm. He's uh, south side of Philly. Mm -hmm. He's in Detroit where there's, the running water is brown. And he's just seeing folk driving by that he knows are drug dealers, that they don't live right, and they just seem to be getting away fat. Mm. All right, so let's start with verse 1. All right, here we go. Truly, God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, mm -hmm. my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. For I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Mm -hmm. Look at this. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. In other words, they never have difficulty. Right, right. Okay. <laughs> they are not in trouble as other men nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Hmm. Their eyes bulge with abundance. Hmm. They have more than heart could wish. Isn't that true? I mean, so sometimes you say, like, <sighs> this is not even right. I mean, here they are riding around and amazingly expensive cars. Yeah, they, uh, they, could, they could give $50 million to a local foundation and then have a whole lot. I'm going to give you $2 million just because I like the way you dress today. <laughs> and they just seem to be having so much. It's going to continue. Deep pick up on verse 8, eight to they, verse 14. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore, his people return here, and the waters of a full cup are drained by them. Okay, stop there for a moment. He says, in other words, they never, <laughs> bring me another bottle, bring me another bottle, yeah. bring me another bottle, bring me another bottle, bring me another, Rich. pour it again, pour it again. Mm -hmm. They keep draining, and they could afford that. Give me a $2,500 bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. yeah. They just like, the, mm -hmm. it says, uh, the waters of a full cup are drained by them. Okay, oh. keep going to verse 11. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly mm. who are always at ease. Mm. They increase in riches. Mm -hmm. Surely I have cleaned my heart and cleaned, cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocent. Mm -hmm. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. Mm. <laughs> he said, I don't even <laughs> want to wake up and see this again. Yeah. This is like painful. Mm -hmm. There yes. I'm at my window and like the, I can't even pay enough to get my air conditioner. I'm sweating and they're driving by in a, a Bentley air conditioner. Mm -hmm. This is like sickening. Yeah. Look at verse, it's going to get. Where, where's the fairness in this? Right. I love you, Lord, and, and they don't. And look at the difference. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep going. Verse 15, I think, what, what now, 15 to 15. 21? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generations of your children. In other words, I wouldn't, nobody would have told me I'd be talking like this as a, as a man that trusts right. the Lord. Why, 
Nobody would say I'd be talking this way. Oh, that's right. I mean, I trust God. Why would I sound this way? That's right. Okay. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Okay, but mm. now here comes the transition. Mm -hmm. Look, what's the I, word? Until I went into the Say the, the word until sanctuary. differently. Until. Until mm -hmm. I went into the sanctuary of God, then, then I understood their end. Notice, until then, but until then. Mm -hmm. See, so many of us don't see where it's going, mm. and we're thinking, this mm. ain't even right. That's right. Oh, okay, God says, <laughs> you know, Asa, yeah. you need a checkup from the neck up. <laughs> Look, oh, come, come inside. Let me just show you where this is headed. That's right. Okay, go ahead, Eric. Surely you set them in slippery places. Mm. Okay, you, now he's seeing what's really going to happen to them. Right. You cast them down to destruction. That's Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. Mm. As a dream when one awakes, so, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. You know, verse 19 talks about how even in their death, they don't have a godly uh, disposition. Ooh. They, don't, they don't even want God at that point of death. Keep going. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. Okay, and now I'm going to 20, 22 to 28. It says, I was so foolish and ignorant. Mm. So we're encouraging you. If you're in this category and mm. you're thinking that God is not being right, don't be foolish and ignorant. Mm. God has a plan that he's not shown you yet. I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. In other words, he's confessing to God. Nevertheless, hmm. okay, God, I'm hanging in there. I am continually with you. I'm not leaving Amen. you. Yeah. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me to glory. I'm going to hang in there and I like verse 25 to 28. Now he's going to start testifying. Mm. Now he's going to start looking at, wait a minute, <laughs> what am I complaining about? I'm the son of the most high God. Yes. He says, whom have I in heaven but you? Amen. And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart Amen. and my portion forever. Yeah. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry, but I love his ending but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Mm -hmm. What a testimony. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. I came to that conclusion so many years ago because there are people in our lives that hurt us, that are painful, um, and then there's other people that are, bring joy to our heart, and that saying, the good die young. Yeah. The thing is, I realized Yes. God gives every individual every single chance on earth That's there right. is. Yes. That's right. mm. I believe that he extends some lives trying to give them ever opportunity. Yes. The other thing that I realize is there's some people in my life, it's like this is the only life they're ever going to have. Mm. Yeah, it's only mm. heaven. This is all they have and it's just a whisper. So God is going to allow it to be as long as it can possibly be for mm -hmm. some people. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Because it's all they have. Yeah. I have eternity and I need to forgive them whatever it is they need to be forgiven mm -hmm. on my part and not be held hostage. So you don't so block your blood. I am blessed That's right. and I need to let these yeah. blessings flow from me flow from me to them when possible or logical. There are some people you need to keep out of your life. But if you can, bless them as much as you can because right. maybe you can get them to, ch to see God. Right. And if they don't, this is all they have. Yeah, honey, this is something that I want you to share right now because I know you've been looking at this. So that's true. God knows how the blessing comes mm -hmm. and, and therefore we should give God the room to yes. flow through us and not only mm -hmm. in us and on us. Share that with There's me. There's a little short paragraph from a song by Laura Story called Blessings. Mm -hmm. And it says, what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if mm -hmm. your healing comes through tears? Mm -hmm. What if the thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? 
Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's true. That's right. And I love the bit, when friends betray us, when friends when betray darkness us, seems to, to win, win, we know the pain reminds us this is not, this is not our, our home. home. It's mm -hmm. not our home. So we're talking about blessings today. Yes. And we should not be jealous or, 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 or misunderstand other people's lives. That's right. True. We need to keep oh, our yes, eyes on Jesus true. and our relationship. Yes. And let other people have, we don't know what their lives are really like. We That's look right. at them from the outside and like I said, that may be the only life yeah. they ever have. I think we also have to realize that God blesses different people differently. I was thinking that. Too. There are some people who can be blessed with millions of dollars mm -hmm. and, and there's some it. people that will be cursed by the millions of dollars. There's some people who are blessed with good looks. There's some people that are cursed because they're good looking. Hmm. You know, God will bless us according to our needs. And we look at this individual and say that they have a million dollars, they're blessed, they might be cursed. Mm -hmm. right. So we have to pray that God gives us the blessings that we need and not admire people for the blessings that you yes. think that they have. Amen. We Matter think fact, that we would be trustworthy with millions and how we could help right. everybody. Yeah. <laughs> But that yeah. God knows who really is trustworthy yeah. with, with what? With, so with many people what? say, I want to live with them. I have family members. I want to win the lottery so I can help my church and do this. Yeah. And yeah. They try to add religious yeah. reasons yeah. to yeah. non-religious activity. <laughs> <laughs> but Eric, I want you to go to Ephesians 1, 3, because we're going to talk about God puts blessings in a particular category. And sometimes oh, we don't see that category. Sometimes we put the blessings in the wrong category that God hasn't mm -hmm. revealed to us. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Blessed be the Lord, the, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Ah. Now, how many spiritual blessings? Every. 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 So has God re held any blessings from us? No, He hasn't. No. No, He hasn't. But who have they come through? Jesus. Jesus. And what is that spiritual blessing that has come through Christ to all of us? Salvation. Salvation. Mm. Amen. When you really think about it, right, let's put this list together. Okay. Uh, you pick one of these 10 items. Million dollars, oh. mm. uh, 6,000 square foot house, fully paid for. Oh. You can fly anywhere in the world, first class for the rest of your life. Oh. <laughs> uh, Bentley or Maserati, but your car of choice. Oh. Yeah. You check it. Uh, yeah. Uh, food for, for life, <clears throat> we'll pay for it. Oh. Uh, great health for life. Oh. Salvation. You can only pick one. Ooh. Amen. And eternity. Ooh. Amen. Oh. I'll pick salvation and eternity. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give all that up. See, put, that's why the perspective is what we need to keep in mind. Keep blessings in perspective because as we were, you know, we're in the midst of purging the junk we have in our house mm -hmm. and uh, we are realizing, get rid of 70% of that stuff because you can't take it with you. Mm -hmm. But you could gain the whole world it, and lose your soul. It ties you down. It ties you down. Stuff ties you down. You don't know what to do with it. But isn't it amazing when you're younger, you want all that stuff and then when you get to a certain <laughs> point in life, you're like, oh, like mm -hmm. no. What's all this stuff all about? What's yes. all this? Huh? And it, you, start, you start like losing its significance. What do you think? I think it's because, just speaking from my experience, personal experience, when you're younger, you want to prove yourself. You want to okay. prove yourself worth. You want to show people how much money you can make and what a big car you have and the fancy houses and homes that you have, even though you might use other, say other excuses why you're, you have this fancy job and everything. <laughs> but you, you're trying to prove yourself. When you're older, it's at least from Jones's. my perspective, you're looking to eternity. You're closer right. to God now. You're saying, wait yes. a minute, all these things I built up, Legacy this, this garage full of boxes and things that I built up, that's not going to get me into the kingdom. So you Security. start, your, your perspective changes the older that you get. Security and respect. <laughs> That's right. At, when you're young, like you say, to prove yourself, you want that respect and, and you have these dreams and works. But my, my excuse, my excuse was we wanted to make money to put the kids in private schools and you want to make money to put them in <laughs> yeah. a, a clubs and better places and better things. The truth was <laughs> no. I was doing it because I wanted to prove myself to the world. I want to show this picture, and I don't, I'm going to hold it up. Hold I it wish up. we had planned it earlier. I know. I'm going to see if you could zoom in on that. I'm just going to try to hold oh. it still. This is so <laughs> funny to me because somebody sent this to my wife. It's a, it's a young man standing in front of a garage filled with junk, mm. and his dad Stop. says, Son, <laughs> one day all this will be yours. <laughs> One day, son, all, all this, this will, will be, be yours. yours. And, and it's, it's like, stuff, 
stuff, stuff, stuff. And stuff. I've seen people and like that. You drive by, their cars are outside. And I was wondering, why did they all drive their cars and put it in the garage? Yeah. You lift it up like, yeah. right <laughs> there. The door goes down just Get beyond their stuff. The I always remember the story that you guys told, and I think it was you guys, where you went to some other country and the kid had a balloon. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Like that balloon Africa. was... Blowing up the balloon and their eyes are like, oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Big yeah, red balloon. balloon. And we're thinking, you try to do that in America, the kid will pop it and say, yo, man, I need a PS5. Isn't it interesting <laughs> how we try to hold on to all this stuff? And yet, mm -hmm. quite often, if we would, the stuff we're not using is stored in the garage yes. or stored up here or wherever, we all have stuff we're not using. Yes. And yet, we could pass it on and let it be a blessing to someone else. Exactly. Instead, we hang on to it and it rots and deteriorates until it's no good. And we lose that blessing. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, so let's talk about the blessing of God. Let's go to First Chronicles 17, 27, honey, uh, point number five. And the question we're going to pose is how long, when God blesses you, oh, how long? Oh, we skip four. Uh, did we skip four? Yeah, the conditions. Well, we talked, uh, Eric actually mentioned that earlier when I, Jacob oh, was wrestling. Okay, yeah. Said, I'm not going to let you go until you yes, bless me. Yes, And that was beautiful. Yeah. Because they don't endure and they let go and, yeah. So how long does God's blessings last when uh -huh. God blesses us. First Chronicles 17, 27. Now you have been pleased to bless the house of your servant, that it may continue before you forever. For you have blessed it, O Lord, and it shall be blessed forever. That's right. So when wow. God blesses his servants Who God bless, forever. no man curse. Say it again. Who God bless, no man curse. No. Mm -hmm. You know, matter of fact, we were reading in the book of Jeremiah, and the Lord says, I will be the enemy of your enemies. Yeah. If you trust, I will be the enemy of your enemies. Mm -hmm. I will be the one who blesses you. Mm -hmm. To those, who, I will make sure that you're covered. For those who fight against you, I'll fight against them. Yes. You cannot put, you can't handle what God promises he alone can handle. Mm -hmm. And so if he blesses, he says, those who serve me, I'm going to bless them mm -hmm. and they shall be blessed forever. And you wonder, you see people that, man, they're so humble, so nice. They just, it's not that they have a lot. But God is blessing them for their faithfulness. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. And you know, the desires of our heart, the more you draw closer to the Lord, mm -hmm. the more your desires change. Yeah. And He can bless you more and more because your desires and His desires are on the same track. Mm -hmm. They're identical. That's very true. So, yeah. matter of fact, let's now let's shift. We're going to take a quick left turn here okay, because we're going to talk about another kind of blessing. So far we've been talking about maybe like materialistic blessings, mm -hmm. financial blessings, health blessings, but let's look at another kind of blessing that the person who has come to the Lord mm -hmm. understands this very well. Psalm 32 verse 1. Now, who just read? I did. D. Okay, D, read Psalm 32 and verse 1. This is point Psalm number 6. Psalm 32, uh, Psalm 30, oh, spiritual blessing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Blessed is he whose trans Transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Wow. Mm. Okay. That, th that's what the, that's the, that's the beginning. That's the start. Could that's, you put a price on that? Everything comes with is, is being forgiven and my sin is covered to give me eternal life. That's, that's the basis, the foundation of everything, of all the blessings is guilt, having guilt, that relationship. Guilt is a burden that people, mm -hmm. some people carry their entire life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And to be forgiven, mm -hmm. to know that you're forgiven yes. and that burden is gone, mm -hmm. it's like freedom. That's right. You know, when I used to do prison ministry, there were so many people in there that felt guilty. Yes. And when they realized that their guilt mm -hmm. was forgiven, the guilt that they had, mm -hmm. the thing that they did was forgiven through the blood of Christ, mm -hmm. they changed. Mm -hmm. Their personalities changed. Mm -hmm. right. So that weight is, is, like you said, it's a tremendous, when that's removed, that's a tremendous blessing. And it also, what it does to you when you carry that weight of guilt around, you don't want to be around anyone who has been forgiven because mm. that just contrasts you so drastically that you just can't handle it. That's right. And you want to run away from, from anything. But usually I try and show them that you can be forgiven also. Mm -hmm. and, and this is this is the way. That's and how we bless them. That's right. Is showing them a way of... The path. Of the path. The path to removing that guilt. Removing that burden. That of burden. Guilt. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So it's, um, it's amazing that God does that 
when a person receives forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You will never know unless you are that person. That's right. You'll never know unless y you are forgiven and then, then to be let out of spiritual prison, yeah. to be let out of that pr prison of transgression, mm -hmm. and then to be told, by the way, your record has been cleared. Mm. Mm. So you don't have to walk down the street no worrying about anything. No more ball and chain. No more ball and chain, that's oh. right. And so, so that's the blessing that blessed is the person whose transgression is forgiven, whose mm. sin is covered. It's interesting, John, because that guilt can set the direction of your life. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, they say, well, I'm lost. What I've yeah, done is yeah, so yeah. horrible. I might as well just go down this other road. Yeah. It's all over. I'm just going to go do whatever I'm going to do. And, 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 and they're done. And when they realize that they're not done, yeah. that they're forgiven, the course of their life changes Thanks. because Absolutely. they're no longer, they're no longer miserable inside. They no longer have that guilt yeah. and it, it totally changes their direction. That's where I was at because when I was a child being raised up and taught that you know, you're, if, if you don't go to heaven, you're going to go to hell and burn forever. I, I saw myself through my eyes and it's like, um, and no, we're not going to go there. Anyway, <laughs> I saw myself as being so lost, I would never make it to heaven. Mm. I'll never make it to heaven. So all I have is this life. So I'm just going to live like wow. the devil. And mm. I just... Through caution to the wind. Through caution to the wind and did whatever I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And yet, and I stayed away from Christians because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be reminded of that. But God never gave up on me. Never. Amen he, for that. He blessed me even in, in, in the mire and the mud. That's right. And he lifted me out of it. That's and right. once, once you saw yourself through God's eyes mm -hmm. and you accepted the forgiveness, and you accepted that He would change you. What a miracle, what a miracle of life is. that is, and what a He does. That's the blessing of eternal Amen. life. That's right. Amen. That's the blessing of eternity, forgiveness. Your sin it's is covered. Spiritual. But there's another blessing that people often miss. Eric, let's go to Malachi 3:10. Oh, oh yeah. This one is, to <laughs> me, this, to me, is yeah. the, <laughs> the 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 least thing a person can do. Mm -hmm. when they are mm -hmm. servants of God. It shouldn't even be a difficulty, but the Lord will promise to bless those who are faithful. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Dee is a treasurer, I'm the pastor, and we know there's so many people that miss out on this blessing Aww. because some, somehow they think of this as, yeah. I'll let you read it first and then we'll go ahead and break it down. <laughs> Malachi, Malachi 3, 3 10. verse 10, mm -hmm. bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings that there will not be room enough to receive it. Who could beat that? Oh! There won't even be enough room. Somebody said, what, hap what happened to so-and-so's house? There's stuff all over the lawn. Mm. Uh, God poured out so much nice. stuff, I had no room to receive it. Mm. And the, the kind of blessing God is talking about here is it when God pours into you. Yes. But you still, it doesn't you? have to be money. Material. Right. Material. Thank you. Health is wealth. Oh. When you have a blessing of good health. Mm -hmm. Oh. How many people would give all their money away for good health? That's oh. right. I have told this story several times. I, David told me, he said, it, when, when we became Christians, we were going to pay tithe. He says, yeah. it, never, it never doesn't make any sense, but we're going to, you know, you pay tithe. And it always works out. 90% goes farther than 10%. Mm -hmm. Well, we had, we were... You mean then 100%? I mean, yeah. I got you. you. 90% <laughs> goes more than, goes farther than 100%. So we had moved someplace and David had taken a job that he had to live on a pay, we had a paycheck, which was kind of unweird to us because we <laughs> normally had our own businesses and we weren't used to living on a paycheck that you couldn't make more <laughs> or whatever. So one time I was sick and this had been going on for months and I, and I couldn't go to church. So I gave Dave the tithe envelope and he opened it up and he goes, we can't afford this. I says, We've been paying this for months and all our bills are paid. Uh -huh. And I says, and he said, what I tell you, it don't make any sense. <laughs> so when people say to me, they can't afford to tithe, I'm like, oh, can't I can't afford, afford not, to. not to tithe. Amen. I right. can't imagine. Be God's given. 
not tithing and, and trying to give more and more. I, I always tried to up my tithe and offerings a little bit each when I got a raise or whatever. <laughs> and God has, I have had no financial issues. Mm -hmm. Am I rich? Have I got money to burn? Can I go do this or that? No. My needs are met Amen. and a lot of my wants are met. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but I am faithful in my tithe and offerings. But I still have the relate. You can't just be faithful in your tithe and offerings without the relationship. That's right. Amen. The exactly. relationship comes first, the Amen. foundation. And even as a pastor, you return oh, your tithes too. That's right. Oh, it's he better, because I'd tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> no. All through the years. Yes, exactly. He's been faithful. Now, how do you expect the church to be blessed yeah. if the leader's not going to be yeah. faithful? But there's then? some churches that are that way. It's unfortunate. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And you'll see the evidences of that. But Dee can tell you, God is blessing Thompsonville. Praise God for that. Yeah. And uh, we can't even give ourselves the credit. We could just say, praise God from praise whom God. all blessings flow. I'm going to read two quick scriptures, and I'm going to okay. go. I'm going to have uh, D go to Isaiah 44, 3. But I want to, just in context of what we just talked about here, what's the beauty of the blessing that we just talked about, the financial blessing? Luke 6, 4, 38. Um, this is the perspective of the financial blessing. And as my wife said, it doesn't have to be financial blessing. It could be health. It could be stability of life. It could be providing all the needs you have without worrying where the need is going to be taken care of. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. But look at this. This is the reciprocal blessing. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. In other words, if you're going to be stingy, God's going to be stingy. Hmm. If you're going to be picky, some people return tithe like five hundred and forty dollars and thirty eight cents. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. cut it out. Yes. Just round that off. Right. You can see those. But all, now all that's those. sometimes that's somebody's personality. Sometimes <laughs> I give grace and mercy when I see that. I'm like, OK, <laughs> okay. Oh. It's, it's amazing. Well, Some people are that way. That. Yeah. But um, but you go off. to the store, even restaurants sometimes they say, would you like to round off the bill to like the, mm -hmm. give the rest to you know, save the children or whatever mm -hmm. the case may be. But some people don't do that because they can't grasp. They, you can't beat God's giving. Never. No matter how and you also, try. that's just God's law of the more you give, the more you receive. The more love you give, the more love right. you get back. The more gen I, I, it's just a law of God of when you give and you are, you let blessings flow through you and you give to other people. I can give away clothes and then I'll get more clothes. It's just, it's a, it's a river of flowing. It's a conveyor belt. Yes. Mm -hmm. Put it on there and it will go and something will be on the mm -hmm. way to replace it. Mm -hmm. And it, like you say, it's not necessarily material things. It can no. be just the joy in your heart, the joy of life. Oh, yeah. There's a blessing. And then blessing. your blessing can be passed on to generations. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 44 oh, yeah. verse 3. Yes. Look at that one. For I will pour water on him who is thirsty and the floods on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your offspring. Mm. See, God is saying this is going to long before you're, mm. you know, long after you cease to breathe, mm. people coming after you for those who don't have children, like we don't have children. But God is saying you can set it up so that, and as we know, mm. trust services here at 3ABN, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if God blesses you, set it up so that the blessing of God can continue for the work of God. It makes all the difference. And support your local church. That's right. It's so very important. Don't forget to support your local yeah. church. As a matter of fact. And you will support your local church if you're involved with your local church. <laughs> yes. When like you that. get involved with your church, <laughs> then you will support it with your yes. finances and your time and your talents. And, um, and, and, and what else? No, oh, she said it. Dee said it. Time, talent, talent. testimony, and treasure. The four yes. areas of blessings. Amen. Let's wind it up to uh, Genesis 12, 3, and then we have some closing thoughts here. What, did God, what does God promise to do? I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Wow. How many times have millions of people yeah. been blessed by the actions of one? That's right. I talk about the power of one, and I'm just going to use some secular people as an example. Um, Okay, what, what if Steve Jobs decided one day, ah, I'm not into computers. There would be no Apple. I get it? That's right. They would, what if, what if uh, Bill Gates said, ah, I'm just going to stay in college and just do my four years and just 
have a great time. There would be no Microsoft. That's right. Okay, what if Elijah decided, nah, I'm not preaching any messages, don't, 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 don't put me in that. Then the, the, the deliverance of the people of God would not have been possible. That's right. William. Okay, the, look, what if William Miller and decided, decided, I am I not, not going to preach. I am not <laughs> preaching, only if God asked me to. Somebody knocked on this door. William school. Miller, you need to preach. Mm -hmm. What if this young girl named Ellen White decided, I'm too frail. Mm -hmm. Please don't put this burden on me. Mm -hmm. The, the blessings are untold, uncounted. And I'm sure that you may have family members. Mm. That I know some people call us and say, you know, my aunt died and they left an inheritance and I want to figure out how I could bless others with that. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. The blessing continues. I will bless those who bless you. But then look at the other side of that. I will curse those, those who curse you. Yes. Wow. Well, you know, our, our program comes and goes so quickly. Honey, what's on your mind before we wind up? I just want to be a blessing to someone out there. Mm -hmm. Everybody want to receive a blessing, but be a blessing to someone out That's there. People call me oh, so many times and write, and I try to encourage others. So mm -hmm. if God has blessed you, bless them. Mm -hmm. Okay. D? When, you know, sometimes people, you know, I, I, I need to go to church so I can be blessed. The attitude should be, I need to go to church so I can be a blessing to someone else. Wonderful. When you yeah. give, you receive back. When you give blessings to your neighbors, to your friends, to your family, when you give of yourself, you, are, you receive back blessings that fill you and give you yes. a joyful life. Yes. That's right. That's right. Eric? Sometimes it's difficult to look at things that happen in your life as a blessing, yeah. mm -hmm. but you have to realize that if you keep Christ at the center, mm -hmm. whatever you're going through, mm -hmm. and we've all mm -hmm. gone through stuff mm -hmm. and we're going to go through things in the future, yes. Yes. whatever you're going through will be, the blessing will be revealed if you keep your eyes on him. Amen. That's right. And so, right. so we, we learned, and I want to go back to the point you made early in the program. This is beautiful when you talk about Jacob wrestling with oh, God. Yeah. Some of you need to wrestle with God, yes. not wrestle God, mm. wrestle with God mm. and recognize that he is there for you to wrestle with him, wrestle with him in prayer, yes. wrestle with him about your family, wrestle with him about your spiritual life. And when you do all that, say, I will not let you go unless <laughs> you, you bless me. Unless you <laughs> bless me. Yes. We want to wish you a happy Sabbath and let's all say that together. Happy, happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Honey, it's been good to have you here. Thank you so much, Dee, for being here. Yes, thank you, Eric, Eric, for being here. Wonderful. And thank all of you for joining yes. us. This has been a happy family yes. worship. Our prayer is that God will bless you as you desire to serve him. Happy Sabbath.